it is code red in the anime fighting game scene as one of the top titles in the FGC today is in danger of being banned entirely from tournament play. Recently, FGC news sites have seen stories of tournament organizers being forced to cancel planned events for Dragon Ball Fighters. In November 2018, DreamHack Austin canceled their DBFZ event. Now, the game's tournament scene has been rocked from back-to-back -back blows from the news that the game will not only be absent from EVO Japan, but Anime Ascension 2019 as well. As you're likely aware, Dragon Ball Fighters released in January 2018 to critical acclaim and quickly shot to the top of the fighting game community. The game and its community quickly saw record-breaking sales, tournament entries, and interest from even the most casual fighting game fans. So why now, at the end of a long year of stunning success, are the wheels falling off of the Dragon Ball Fighters hype train? Well, internet speculation points the finger at Toei Entertainment, the owners of the Dragon Ball anime series. The ownership of the Dragon Ball franchise is a bit complicated with many hands in the cookie jar, but Toei is the only entity in this equation with a history of combative relationships with fans who create content in the Dragon Ball ecosystem. For a well-known example, look at their relationship with Team 4 Star, a collective of content creators most well-known for creating the Dragon Ball Abridged parody series. Their series has been threatened and removed from YouTube multiple times from Toei Entertainment, and were pulled from providing the voices for a scene in the Kai cut of Dragon Ball Z because Toei simply did not approve of the use of Team 4 Star. Now, this isn't the first time that a rights holder has tried to flex their muscle in the fighting game scene. Back in 2013, Nintendo attempted to block Evo from running an event for Super Smash Bros. Melee. After a healthy backlash from the platform fighting game community, Nintendo eventually eased up and allowed the event to be ran and even started to sponsor events themselves. But why would Toei want to stop tournaments of one of the most successful video games that the Dragon Ball franchise has ever seen? It could be because of money. Toei isn't seeing revenue from all of the tournaments running a game with their property, so they could be pricing out tournament organizers as a way to stop tournaments entirely, but that doesn't quite make sense. They could be trying to slow the sales of Dragon Ball Fighters in order to bolster sales of Jump Force, but that doesn't make much sense either. I asked David Ultra David Graham about why a company like Toei might prevent tournaments from running Dragon Ball Fighters, and this is what he had to say. Quote, I suspect it's just because they want to control how their IP is used, and they don't like the idea of people playing in tournaments. Maybe they think that means viewers won't need to buy the game so they're losing sales, which is ridiculous but has been said by other rights holders in the past. Or maybe they just don't like it for some dumb personal reasons. But they don't need a reasonable reason. They can prevent anyone else from using it for whatever reason or no reason. Toei's alleged opposition to the Dragon Ball Fighters tournament scene draws a line in the sand for the game's community. Major tournament organizers could very well be bullied out of running the game entirely. Markman, the biz dev guy for EVO, noted that they barely got approval to run Dragon Ball Fighters at EVO 2018, and now Mr. Wizard, EVO's head TO, says that Dragon Ball Fighters could be potentially, quote, one and done. And if a game as influential as Dragon Ball Fighters misses the biggest fighting game tournament of the year, that is surely to be an event that will send ripples throughout the fighting game community. Some players are already being monetarily affected by all of these tournament cancellations, and it shines a light on the ugly truth of this new age of esports and content creation on places like YouTube and Twitch. If a rights holder wants to come for you, there's not really much that you can do to stop them. Hey everyone, thank you once again for checking out this video. It means a whole lot. Uh, I know this isn't exactly what you come to the channel for, but uh, these videos actually don't take that long to make. Um, probably usually takes me an afternoon at the most. Uh, so if there's any FGC news or gaming news that I'd like to cover, this is probably going to be the avenue that I'd like to cover it in. Um, uh, item number two, uh, my game of the year list is still coming out, but uh, the holiday is probably going to force me to push it into the first week of 2019. Uh, and lastly, and this is a big one, I have finally been approved for the YouTube partnership program, which means that I will finally be making some money off of these YouTube videos. That is extremely exciting for me, and I cannot wait to show you what I will do. Uh, I, don't worry, uh, the money that I'll make will go back into this video production. That means better lighting, better sound, 
um, more videos, just better quality in general. So I'm so excited that I can bring you guys along with me, and uh, I really look forward to seeing what we can do together. Thanks once again. I'll see you soon.